Welcome, and thank you for joining for another whiskey review. Today, we go back to Dustin's favorite distillery, Springbank. We're gonna do the 17-year-old Madeira. Wood, cast, I'm sorry, pronunciation. You know, they used to call these things wood. They seem to have dropped it, I don't know. I'm Madeira. calling it Madeira wood. So this is a 2020 bottling. Yep. It was uh, bottled in October of 2020. Distilled November of 2002, so nearly 18 years old, within a month. Yeah. Uh, 9,200 bottles, if you can pick that up there on the back of the cask. And this one comes in at 47.8% ABV. Dustin, we, I kid that, you know, always when you bring these spring banks, they know that you're the king of spring bank and it's your favorite distillery. It may be your favorite distillery, but you always pick up a lot of the quality, quality spring banks. And I love you for it, buddy. Yeah, I try. These are getting harder and harder to get, buddy. Now I tell you what, you um, shook this up a little bit, and uh, it is a dirty, gritty, grimy whiskey. Yeah. It almost looks like tea. And it's interesting. I didn't notice this when I first poured it. It was crystal clear, but for some reason, it started getting some pretty noticeable sediment there at the bottom. Did I pour it myself short? Yeah, you're, you're a little high, actually, I think. A little high? Yeah, it's all good. We'll go in for some more. Beautiful, light brown color. I've got another bottle. We can drink all we want. Ah, oh, Dustin, I love these spring banks yeah. anymore. When I first got this, Mike, the 47% was a little low. And, mm -hmm. You know, when I, my first couple pours of this one really did not impress me. And mm -hmm. as I, we've both learned, you've got to wait for Springbank. Oh, yeah. Especially these special bottlings where they're a little higher proof. you got to take your time with this one. I don't know if this is cast strength or not. I would say no. Well, if you're pouring a little more, I'll take a little. Uh, the Capitas are um, deceiving with uh, how full. Yeah, they are. They're a tough one. And they're about the same actual fill as the Glencairn, which is shocking to me. Yeah, we looked it up. We were surprised. But, yeah, I've done the whole pour, but getting like the same fill level is just different. Mm -hmm. The low end's different, I guess is what I'm trying to say. It's it, the Glencairn yeah. is pretty bulbous. You know, if you get this high on Glencairn, you got a lot of whiskey. exactly. You got to like get these higher. I mean, this is just classic That's just spring bank. bank. That's just I mean, just yeah, classic spring bank. Mm. But it's a fresh spring bank comparatively. Yeah, Van the peat's not and, coming out a lot no. here. Vanilla and linen, sugar cookies, lemon, yeah. Lemon sugar cookies. Now, I think some of that lemon is the Madeira. It's not. It, it's not as. It's, it's missing something in the front end to be true lemon, and I'm thinking that has something with Madeira. And I'm not a Madeira expert. I don't know exactly what Madeira wine tastes like, Mike. I just think the lemon is um, in the same barrel of, as vanilla. Like they're they're mixing together. To me, it's sugar cookies and lemon cookies. Those Girl Scout lemon yeah, cookies and those too. and some sugar cookies just. Mm. Mm, beautiful whiskey. Again, fresh and clean, yeah. too. But you do notice there's a wine influence here. There's a wine note. I don't know that I can necessarily pull out the Madeira. And I believe Madeira is kind of a fruitier, sweeter, maybe like jammy kind of a wine. My gut feeling from Jammy would be a good descriptor on that. There's a jamminess to this, and I think that's coming from Madeira. So I'm probably lying to you a little bit on, I think that's Madeira. I'm saying I think that jamminess is Madeira. Well, it's all subjective to some degree. I mean, yeah. there's no way to prove it. One exactly. way or the other. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful nose, very spring bank, but not, it's probably low on the peat for spring bank. I'm not really low picking up peat, much. Low on the funk, you know, it's... It's clear, yeah. Yeah, clean. Clean, linen, fresh. There's more oak funk than there is spring bank funk. Which is sort of surprising, being only 17 years old. Or just shy of 18 years old. Yeah. But, you know, 18, I mean, I think that's... We haven't done an 18 together at this point, Mike. We probably need to bring a few of those out because... Mm -hmm. 18 is an interesting animal. It, it changes up a lot. Yeah, you got a few of those. Might as well bring out the purple label. We got two. Yeah, I got a couple 2020s. Mm. Yeah, with the lemon, more I, more I nose on it, the lemon is becoming more prominent. The funkiness is way back there, but it comes off super oily on the nose for mm -hmm. a 47.5. I mean, I wouldn't think that's cast strength, but usually when they do these special releases, it's pretty close. I've never it? seen one under 50%, which makes me think maybe there's just a these did come in low. Mm -hmm. What are you picking on the palate? So it's super jammy up front. It's jammy. It's got that spring bank cookiness to it. It's got some really nice things. It comes off maybe, it's both oily and a little lacking initially there. But then, Mike, you get a beautiful finish on this thing. Actually, pretty intense, pretty strong. Now, we've been drinking a lot of cast strength, epic super whiskeys. epic aged whiskeys. Mm -hmm. And this, the finish on this one, I think is getting a little bit lost because we've had some incredible stuff today, but that finish really was impressive. It had a lot of depth, a lot of complexity. Candy vanilla at the end. Yeah, but it also has a beautiful oak lingering mm -hmm. note. Oh, you're right. It really holds on. I mean, 
It it's, drinks like it could be older than 18 years old. It isn't um, as pungent of a finish. Mm -hmm. uh, but that doesn't mean it's not beautiful and candy and it doesn't last. Because yeah. it does all those things. Mm -hmm. It does all those things. Beautiful whiskey like always. Yeah. Balance is incredible here. While, you know, again, usually these things are showcases for these casks. And I think there is something different here that's coming from this Madeira. Mm -hmm. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Mike, they, um, I believe this started its life in a rum cask and then got transferred over to a uh, Madeira cask. And I believe, I believe those notes are somewhere else, but I don't have, see them on the bottle, but I'm pretty sure this starts its life in a rum cask. Here's the thing, Dustin. I disagree that it is a lighter whiskey. Because of the cast maturation, there's just different flavors coming up in this. But mm -hmm. I still have that linger. Yeah. And at this point, it's just transitioning to vanilla and banana. Like, I am getting soft notes, but mm -hmm. the, the notes are rich and they're deep and they're long-lasting. This, to me, I mean, I wouldn't say this is my favorite spring bank ever, but this is an incredibly interesting spring bank. Um... I would put it behind the 2521s and the 19 single casts that you brought over. Yeah. But I tell you what, I think I prefer this to the normal 18 or the normal cast strength 12s. Um, this very much is like the 15 um, Rumwood that we did. This is a low key stunner. I think the, the finish thing. is what makes this one like the, the finish is beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful candied vanilla um, and banana. But see, just like with that 15 rum cask, the rum and the Madeira cask aren't over the top casks. So it's just like, say, when Lagavulin did a 21 in 2019 at the Jazz Fest, there was not no sherry, and it was just bourbon cast maturation. It was a beautiful, mm -hmm. rich bourbon cast maturation. If you like the Lagavulin 12, it was like that, but, you know, amped up. It was almost different between Ardbeg 10 and Ardbeg 19. The difference between the Lagavulin yeah. 12 and Lagavulin 21. This is like that. They didn't pick casts that were slap you in the face casts. But that doesn't mean they didn't impart great flavor. And I, I, I and again, I think this is rich. I think this is full. I think the vanilla and banana finish on this, with a little bit of lemon initially, is just excellent. It works so well mm -hmm. together. I think what they kind of, in my mind, they created a, a series here. They started with that rum, right? Mm -hmm. And then they gave us this Madeira where they took those, probably the same rum cask and mm -hmm. then finished them in the Madeira. And I think what they did was they wanted those rum casks to be that coffee, spicy, kind of there's nuanced not, finish. Yeah, there's not a lot of that. This one, they said, what we're going to do is we're going to make it the sweet, jammy, banana, vanilla finish. This is almost like yours, almost, almost like fried peanut butter sandwiches with jelly and bananas. Yeah. So again, the, the, the rum one was the spicy, darker one. This is the sweet, fruity one. Even though we always think of rum, is gonna, it's going to be the fruity one. When we think of any kind of wine finishes, it's going to be the darker one. They flipped the switch on us. They flip their squid or the script or whatever you want to call it. They, they kind of they play games with us. Mm -hmm. And this is exactly that. This is the sweet candied version of that rum cask. Mm -hmm. And I really, I really like it. Yeah, another underrated spring bank. Again, just like that 15 rum cask. Underrated. You know, again, by the time you brought it to me, it, it's kind of down. And we, I think I've had it one other time. But, I mean, just, you know, I know when um, you said you were bringing a couple spring banks. I'm like, hey, bring, bring some of your lesser spring banks. You know, don't bring 25s and 21s yeah. and single casts and stuff like that. But is there really a lesser spring bank? I mean, the, you know, maybe the 10, the, the regular stuff. But you the 15, special, not you, the 10. The 10's exceptional. Mm, <laughs> you get any of these special exotic wood finish ones, man. They're all excellent. Again, this is, like I mentioned earlier, one of the other reviews, this is clearly whiskey done with love. Yeah, I mean, they, they really know what they're doing. And I'm still a little confused by the ABV. I wish Springbank uh, would tell us what happened there. Did they just think, oh, you know what, this one needs some water? Or did they go, no, actually, we had a bunch of rum casts that were losing proof, and we decided to throw those in Madeira. Do you remember what the 15 year rum was, ABV wise? It's just over 50. Yes, I would say probably not. I would say what water's probably added to this, but it's still, it feels oily yeah. and rich. I mean, they tend to do these are just over 50%. Every rum one, or every wood version, has usually been that. Yeah. Mm. This is just, this is an easy drinker that has so much depth, so much complexion. This brings me back to my 
early days of scotch drinking when I was impressed by some of these 43% 18-year-old whiskeys. Yeah, you, you were on the journey. Yeah, and, but this like this impresses me like those did back then. Mm -hmm. Like this is like the when, once you've grown up and become a whiskey geek, this brings back those memories of like oh that beautiful sweet cast. The first time I had like a Glenmorangie 18, and I was like oh it's so sweet and yeah. creamy and yummy. This and now that good. comes off watery and thin. This this is the next step. This brings you back to that, but now that you've kind of matured and you really need. Something a little more. What an under special. the radar? What an under the radar whiskey. Now that said, though, Mike, let me tell you, this was not easy to get. Yeah, I mean, none of them are. <clears throat> but again, it's not the one, one of the ones you would think of as like, oh, that's a super sought after spring mix. Yeah, I mean, I don't know that the secondary went super crazy here in the states. Now again, the states we're living in a very different spring bank bubble than the rest of the world. Agreed. Our Canadian friends have already started seeing them become ridiculous and. I know our friends in the UK are just, they're looking at us like, what are you talking about? Get whatever spring makes. I had to cut a kidney out just to get a smell of this. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Eventually, I'm sure the American whiskey buyers will, will catch on to this because they tell you what, they're being harder and harder to find. Remember I was saying yeah. here I was looking for a uh, spring make 25? Can't find them anywhere. What? Did I, I told you about the local barleys by me, right? Mm hmm So guys, I was very lucky. We had like three different vintages of local barley just sitting on the shelves. Been there since they first came out. And I'd been, you know, slowly buying one or two here and there. I didn't want to be the guy who just bought them all. I was, you know, trying to be polite. I would be the guy who bought them all. Yeah, he was. Like... Mind you, I, I bought a lot. <laughs> and uh, so one day I went in there. There were, all the balls were there. Two days later I came back. All of them were gone. Somebody just swung, swung by and said, oh, there's like $4,000 of local barley here. I'll take all of them. Yeah, someone like me stopped by. Yeah. I tell you what, I still remember going to the party source in Bellevue, Kentucky, and uh, our, our, my buddy J.O. Um, put aside a Spring Bank 16. He was like, Mike, you should buy this whiskey. It's 187. Buy the Spring Bank 16 local barley. There's two other ones. If I were you, I'd go back to, go back to the shelves and buy every one of them. I was like, eh, $200 for a 16-year-old seems like a lot. I remember saying that out loud. Yeah. I'm saying it here on camera. I'm not proud of it. You know, the only reason I ever bought a local barley was J.O.? Yeah. I was there one day, I look up and I go, is that a local barley you have like on the tasting desk? And he goes, yeah, we did a group tasting uh, with all the staff and that's what we have left. And I was like, I'll take a glass. J.O. put aside two bottles for me at the Party Source. He's a guy who used to work at the Party Source. Um, he did a lot of the reviews if you're uh, on the YouTube channel, uh, or if you're on his YouTube channel. He's doing a few other things now, but J.O. recommended two bottles of whiskey to me. One was that Spring Bank 16 local barley and the other one was Highland Park 28 Cadenhead for 380. And he was like, hey, Mike, I really think you'll like both of these whiskeys. These whiskeys are epic. You should buy them. And I did. Yeah. And then he also recommended like 16 rums and tequilas you never wanted to taste again. No, I had never even indulged that uh, side of it. But, but boy, I did he try. Yeah, but I tell you what, he, both of those whiskeys, he could not have been more correct on. <sighs> those are two stunners. I've only had, I've literally had this much of the 16, and oh my God. And the person who gave me that sample, you know who you are. I'm sworn to secrecy of who gave it to me, but. Thank you. It wasn't me. I gave I gave nope. the heel of that bottle to Keith. I should have never done it. You should have you should have like cloned it or something. Should have done something with it. All right, so I went back with water. Still the same beautiful experience. Maybe the vanilla is a little bit richer. Um, it really didn't change much. Didn't, yeah, no. didn't lose any depth. Didn't lose any mouthfeel. Which makes me think this is probably close to gas strength. Yeah, it actually it might have gotten creamier, Mike. Yeah, well, but, weird as that sounds, I think it actually got a little creamier. It's weird as far as whiskey's growing this one, doesn't. 88. 87 again. And I know I ranked another whiskey 87 at Fourgate in 87. Mm -hmm. I'm just as impressed with it. I mean, it's a very, very good whiskey. Yeah. This whiskey, the more I've gone back to it, this went from probably an 85 for me to where I have, I was debating 89. And you know, for me, Mike, an 89 is a hell of a score. Would you pay for this? 237. Buy. Yep. I'd buy another. I'd buy, I'd buy yeah, 250, $300, I'd buy this whiskey. I bought two. Um, Smart. I saw two. Oh, you bought everything you could. Yeah, I, I thought you weren't the guy to buy the whole show. You just said that earlier. Well, there's one. I get it. It's two different shelves. Yeah. I found one in one store. I found one in another. Kentucky. Two different stores in Kentucky. Yeah. Basically, so Party Source got three bottles. I got mm -hmm. one of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, another store got actually, you know, what? there were two bottles at the other store, but I hadn't fallen in love with the whiskey. It hadn't opened up yet, so. When they got it, I was like, you know what? I'll just grab a second one, but I'll leave that other one for somebody else. Mistakes were made. 
Yes, we love and learn. Yeah. Anyway, um, beautiful whiskey. Um, hashtag by the shelf. Yep. Switch up at Spring Bank. 88, Dustin. 87 for me. If you had a chance to try this one, let us know what you think. We'll put this in our library of, or what's becoming our library of Spring Bank reviews. Yeah. We'll continue to bring you more. Until next time, Dustin, what do we wish the folks? Happy drinking, guys. We'll see you then.